Ron speaking. What you see is a 555 timer. The duty cycle is set uh, very wide and the timing is extremely slow. Uh, when that LED is on, uh, that means a circuit is connected and when the LED is not on, a circuit is disconnected, left off. So it's about on for one second, off for five. It's a wide duty cycle. What I plan on uh, doing with this is the circuit is turning on and off a uh, automobile relay circuit and the relay circuit is going to be connected to that capacitor. What I plan on doing is have my uh, my charging pulses from my Bedini go through that capacitor and this timing circuit uh, let the capacitor charge and then discharge it into a light bulb and I'll be measuring uh, the peaks of voltage and amperage to get an idea of what the output of the Bedini is capable of. So I'm going to be using a uh, this light bulb is a 13 watt light bulb it takes 230 amps to run it or uh, 230 milliamps pardon me and uh, these compact fluorescents are difficult to light. They take a lot of current to get started and then uh, use less energy later on. So they're notorious for uh, not working well with Bedinis. Uh, this is my capacitor. 470 microfarad at 200 volts. So we'll be able to handle the juice I give it. And the uh, automobile relay is a generic guy. Uh, it's only got a four blade on it. I don't know what kind of car uses this. Maybe a ATV uses this. I have no idea. But I got a big bag full of these. Uh, they only cost 50 cents a piece, so I bought a bunch of them. Uh, they're very useful for me. So I'm going to get my Bedini over here and hook it up to that capacitor. And uh, let's measure. Okay, my capacitor is sitting at uh, 7.5 volts at the moment. I'm going to connect up a 10 volt battery pack, 10.4 volts. Start my timer circuit off. Okay, now I'm going to start the Bedini up. Oh, the Bedini's right over here. Let's start her up right now. I'm using a uh, just small battery packs for this. I don't want much power. I'll be pulling about a hundred milliamps. Okay, we can see the uh, voltage of the capacitor as it charges up and down as it flashes flashes the bulb. Here's the bulb over here. So the Bedini is charging up this capacitor and I can see the result uh, in the bulb how much power it's collected when it discharges. Let me hit the maximum button here. So the capacitor is charging up to 58 volts. Eh, call it 60. Beautiful. And uh, what kind of milliamps are we getting over here? Let's see what the maximum milliamps is when the bulb flashes after, after a five second charge up. About 267 milliamps. Yep, that's about the highest peak so far. Yep, nothing bigger. You can see the effect on the bulb. So when you collect a couple hundred, uh, oh geez, I don't know how many pulses I'm collecting. You connect a, 
I collect a bunch of pulses together in a uh, capacitor. Uh, even a small one, it's only 470 uh, microfarad. It's a pretty decent output. Switch back to voltage. Actually, let's switch back to amperage again. That's a, that's a pretty high one. Is that, uh, is that a fairly average reading? Yeah, 257 again. Hmm. Try that one more time. Looks like the uh, reading can't keep up with the actual peak. So yeah, it's up there. 263 milliamps. It's pretty good. So basically, 60 volts, 264 milliamps. Flashing this bulb pretty good. So, if you slow down the pulses of your BDD, this is what's uh, happening inside a, a battery, getting jolted every now and then. These jolts are slowed down, and the capacitor is turning it back into uh, hot energy instead of uh, cold electricity. Not bad. That's all I got for now. Run out. So it's the day after that experiment. I was discharging my Bedini into a capacitor to try to rate uh, how much power is being output uh, into a battery or whatever. And I measured the output between the collector of my transistor and the emitter. And I got a reading of about 80 hertz. Uh, at the uh, same power consumption I was doing that experiment so uh, I'm getting about 80 pulses per second and that discharge from the capacitor uh, the capacitor I, I should say charged for five seconds before discharging so I figure I was catching 400 pulses from my machine and uh, I was reading it at 60 volts and 264 milliamps which gives me 15.84 watts per momentary pulse. So if you work backwards with 400 pulses, that's about 0 0.04 watts per pulse. Uh, now the exact voltage output and amperage of each pulse, uh, difficult to tell, almost impossible to measure directly, uh, but my machine had a larger coil and I used a very small capacitor to, to uh, try to read the voltage when it was uh, one complete coil instead of two separate coils. Uh, I measured 300 volts at the output, so it's reasonable to assume I have near 150 volt uh, peaks now. So again, I worked uh, the math from my experiments and I get the conclusion that it's reasonable to assume that each one of my pulses from my Bedini motor is about 150 volts at 0.3 milliamps. And uh, that makes sense uh, from all the testing I've done for many months. Uh, also, it makes sense that uh, this kind of energy does not hurt uh, alkaline batteries, which are not meant to be recharged because there's no almost no amperage associated with it. This is cold electricity. So lots of voltage, no amperage, equals no heat. And batteries seem to love this type of pulsing. So if you want to use this machine for something other than batteries, uh, you can use these results. You can collect the energy over time and discharge a capacitor more slowly. And that would uh, run something else but this is my power output this is how I was finally able to rate it run out